I think at a lot of other universities, especially in science, you can find a faculty member that you really connect with and you jump onto their project. But at Bennington, you have to make your own project. And so that relationship of kind of you fostering this idea and somebody that you know is so accomplished and so intelligent helping you and, you know, feeding into it, I think is really powerful in terms of gaining confidence as a scientist and as a thinker. I took an astronomy class with you, like an intro astronomy class, and that was like, Awesome, super sick. We were pretty much following a design and a procedure that was developed by this guy who works at the Haystack Observatory. And this this telescope was developed as a way to get um, undergraduates into radio astronomy in sort of a hands-on way by building a telescope themselves. And so there's tons of documentation, um, albeit not a lot of it is very good. And there's a lot of holes. And so part of what I was doing over the summer was filling in those holes, like via our own experiences. My junior year, I studied abroad in Ecuador. We got to do eight research projects that were completely our own questions. And I think even from the beginning, one of the questions that interested me most was why, why are there all these species in this one place? And so when I was in this place where there were double or triple the amount of species that I was used to looking at here, um, suddenly that excited me even more. I'm in it because I love the unknown. What happens inside a cell? How do two proteins interact? How does a protein interaction lead to a gene expression? Or, and what that expressed gene has effect in, in the cell? It's what really intrigues me. I study generally neuroscience and chemistry are my two main concentrations. But I'm interested in looking at how very small molecules, like proteins, how such a small thing can make such a large impact in a system, like in the body. I mean, my idea for my advanced work is looking at uh, beech bark disease. It really changes the forest, and it's an invasive scale. This is like a little thing that explains the potential future outcomes of what our forest will look like. And I'm trying. I'm. I'm hoping that sequence resistant trees and susceptible trees and compare target sites in their genomes to see if they have genetic evolved resistance to the scale. It seems far-fetched, but five years ago, an undergraduate would never have been able to sequence a tree, so...